Mr. Mike Strain is Ag Commissioner for the state of Louisiana, Ag as in agriculture. Hey, Mr. Mike, welcome to Keel. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'm great. I'm great. How's the weather? It's raining here in South Louisiana. No, well, we're, Aaron, we're dry. It, the perfect weather for marijuana growing. Would you take a moment <laughs> and up, uh, update hey. us on the state of marijuana, in parentheses medicinal? You had a big meeting yesterday, correct? Well, yes. Well, one of many. Uh, we had a meeting. We met with GB Sciences. We met with them for about four hours going through line by line their what's called the standard operating procedures and also working on their timetables. Now, we're going to allow them to operate from a temporary facility that is housed adjacent to the permanent facility. It's what's called a pod. Uh, and what the pod means is that it's a self-contained single unit. And so we do expect that they will probably be able to set the, the tissue cultures, but not plants, the tissue cultures, and start uh, hopefully by Friday evening or Saturday morning. Uh, so we were there with them for about four hours yesterday. We do have inspectors at their facility today. We have to give it a final inspection, make sure everything's clean uh, and everything is in place as they start the process to make sure that, you know, when they get this crop grown out, they'll be able to use the product. There won't be any contamination to anything of that nature. So this so is... Uh... Both teams have been working together very, very hard. Uh, and again, the, the, the standard operating procedures have to be in place because that governs how they grow it. Uh, that governs all the rules, everything from uh, the, the type of water, with the water they use to any pesticides if they need it, where everything is stored, how you dispose of waste, the tracking systems that have to talk, you know, security, transportation, mm -hmm. all those many issues. Um, but we, we're moving along, and hopefully we will have them uh, where they have the ability to start their cultures. And that's where they're starting from, from what's called a tissue culture, which is a, think of a slice of a plant. Think of that as a very okay. small slice of plant. And they can start the, the, the initial grow out of X number of plants. I would assume that the... The bar is so high, <clears throat> pardon me, that the bar is so high because this is going to be medicine, right? Yes, and if you think about uh, what happens if you have a, a drug that is approved by the FDA on the federal level, it takes five to ten years, right, to get to market. We're trying to, you know, we're doing this in less, really less than two years, but, but this particular phase, you know, working with these approvals to do it in a few months, it takes a tremendous amount of work because... Again, we have to work together to develop all of this. This is all new. I mean, this is, you know, to develop a drug uh, from these particular, you know, these plants. And so we have to work together to make sure everything's done exactly right because there is no margin of error. Because this is a drug that's going to people uh, that are ill. Mike, and let so me ask you, the, the, some of the folks are saying that this was supposed to be ready in September. Now it looks like November. And they've accused your department of dragging dragging your feet. You're well, saying you know, you're just getting all the I's dotted. Well, the thing with it is, when you're working on like the standard operating procedures, they have to be right. And so everything has to be right. And we are the chief regulator, and we are responsible to make sure that the growing, the extraction, the transportation, the delivery of this compound is right. And we are working, you know, we, we, we have a team in place. You know, we've hired a number of people to do this. We've been working diligently, and I know everybody is anxious, but it's going to be done right, period. And that's why the responsibility for this was put in our agency. So, Mike, We're when, when can when, agency in the state. when can Robert go to the pharmacy in Shreveport <clears throat> and get his medical marijuana for his glaucoma? Well, hopefully if they can get the plants set this weekend. We hope that they will have tissue culture starting. And then, you know, the grow-out is probably... I guess four or five weeks, and it depends. Uh, the extraction press, right, the method, that has not even been set up. So on their side, they don't have all their equipment in place. So yes, we're sir. moving to get them approved, a temporary you know, provisional approval to move forward, but they don't have all their equipment in place. So, you know, it's, this thing is going to take a little time. I think they'll have their equipment. It's delivered, but it's not set up. It hasn't been tested. You know, for the extraction, I'm sure it's going to work. Uh, but again, I, I do think you know they're working in real time. We're working in real time. Mike, what is so the I difference? What is the difference? It, you know, I think hopefully maybe by the end of September, just depends on how long it takes to grow the product. What is the difference in standards for medicinal marijuana as opposed to 
recreational marijuana in a state like Colorado or Oregon? Well, I, I guess in Colorado or Oregon, in the recreational marijuana, they're, they're growing out a plant. And here we are making a pharmaceutical drug, and we are charged with oversight of every aspect of that so that, in other words, when that, when you get the, when that drug, when you receive it, it'll have no pesticide in it. It'll have no heavy metals in it. It will have no bacteria in it. It's got to be a pure form. So think about if you go into a pharmaceutical company where they're making an antibiotic, right? You think about the processes and how clean that's got to be. This is not a hothouse grow of marijuana. Uh, the marijuana is grown in order to provide the base for the drug. This is manufacturing a pharmaceutical product. You know, so it's not just, quote, again, growing marijuana in a hothouse and you're going to sell marijuana pods and people are going to smoke it. We're making medicine. Let me, Mike, can I ask you a silly question? Sure. When you when you take the marijuana plants and you get the the medicinal stuff out of them, the 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 weeds and all the junk that's left over, can that mm -hmm. be an export to Colorado? No, ma'am. It has to be destroyed. How, well, how export. are you going to destroy it? What are you doing? When's that party? That's part of the standard operating procedure that is confidential in nature. I really? No, ma'am. I can't tell you that. No, because. Again, that's part of those things that uh, are there because if we, I can't say how we're going to dispose of it because we want to make sure that it, it is totally destroyed and disposed, but that's part of what's in those procedures, exactly how it's done, to where it is rendered unusable. And, but, but once it's extracted, there's not really uh, anything there, but we have, we have disposal mechanisms in place. Is there so just that is proprietary in nature? Is okay. there just the one grower, GB Sciences? Is there are, are there plans down the road to perhaps contract out to other growers? Well, currently LSU has one, LSU and Southern have the licenses. This is the GB Sciences is the sole subsidiary of LSU. They are LSU's contractor, and. So whether or not LSU contracts with another firm, that would be a decision by LSU. Uh, we cannot grant any other licenses, only one to LSU and one to Southern. And so I can't – that would be a question really to LSU. I don't think that they would. They would probably just expand the company there, but that's the decision I think LSU would make. But then we would have to approve, you know, go through the entire approval process, including the suitability and background checks.